Now we move on to the most exciting part of this presentation, how to make money with your recruitment agency. First we're going to look at finding vacancies. It's incredible to think that as much as 85% of vacancies make up the hidden job market. The truth of the matter is it costs time and money to advertise a vacancy which can be very expensive. And because an employer cannot guarantee that they will fill these positions, many will choose not to do so. So they place their jobs, their vacancies on their website, but unless it's the, comp the company's a household name, more times than not these vacancies will just stay languishing on a company's website. And although these vacancies do not get advertised externally, it is very easy to locate them. So let's go through ways in which you can access jobs that are part of the hidden job market. Outlined here are five ways in which this can be done. You can utilize social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn to network, network your way to finding contact details of hiring managers in your industry. Then check that individual's company's website for vacancies. You have vacancies listed in your local or national newspapers. It is a good idea to create a scrapbook to add these vacancies to and then to call the company a week after they've placed the advert to see if the vacancy has been filled or not. If the vacancy has not been filled, then obviously you can offer your services. It's a good idea to offer the client a discount off your, term, off your terms of business, perhaps even deducting the cost of the advert in the newspaper as long as it's not too expensive. This way the company doesn't feel that they've been double whammied, i.e. having to pay, pay twice for the job and for your services. Again, if you type the names of the top 10 companies in your country search engine, followed by the word jobs, i.e. here in the UK is Google, so you type in Amazon Jobs UK in the search engine, and there you'll find numerous vacancies for this company. Not to be overlooked, you can search the leading job boards. Although the majority have vacancies from recruitment agencies, you'll still find a number of direct vacancies from employers. Do you have a family member or a close friend who runs a business? Then ask them if they have any vacancies outstanding that you can help them to fill. And don't just tap into the connections you already have. Figure out who you need to know in your chosen industry to approach, likely the hiring manager, and make that connection whether by getting to follow them with your Twitter or by retweeting their tweets or growing your LinkedIn network until they become a third degree connection. Twitter in particular offers opportunity to connect with professionals who might not otherwise give you the time of day. If you go to the local town hall or library or contact your local councils, you can make inquiries about new companies relocating to your neck of the woods. If they are relocating from some distance, then a large number of the, their existing staff won't necessarily be willing to relocate, which will definitely result in vacancies for you to fill. It is best to contact the company before they relocate to your area. Most libraries and council offices have this information on their website, so it's best to make this your first port of call before going along directly to their premises. The next step is to contact the client. Now again, there are numerous ways this can be done, and I would now like to demonstrate two of them. First, when directly contacting the client, the main obstacle you'll face is getting past your contact secretary, receptionist, or as they're sometimes known in the game, gatekeepers or rejectionist. When you phone through, if you inform the receptionist that you are phoning from a recruitment agency, then you're dead in the water. The response will be, we don't use agencies, we have our preferred list of suppliers, PSL in place, that we stick to a plethora of excuses why they will not put you through. So try not to let on that you're a recruitment agency. When finding the company, simply say, hi, my name is, and of course give your name, I'm interested in your vacancy your company has advertised for a project manager. Can you put me through to the contact's name? Let's demonstrate this further. Let's say the vacancy is for a project manager and the line manager's name is, let's say, Bob Stevens. Then the approach would be, Hi, my name's Joe Davis and I'm interested in the project manager vacancy you have advertised. Can you put me through to Bob Stevens, please? Thank you. 
First thing to note is to end the sentence with thank you because this will come across as more of a command than a request. When you say I'm interested in the vacancy, you usually find that receptionist or the PA will put you through at speed. Wait a minute, Mr. Davis, I'm sure Bob's around somewhere. Don't run away. Why do you think this is the case? I can see some of you ahead of the game. Yes, they think you are a candidate. Now, are you interested in the position? Yes or no? Yes, again, of course you would be right. You are definitely interested in the position. Now, if the receptionist misunderstands your level of interest, is that your problem? No. So you invariably find that they will put you through at speed. Now, when you get through to the client, you cannot say, of course, that you're interested in the, the, the job, try to pull the wool over his eyes. You'll get short, sharp shrift. So the approach should be, the reason for my call is I'm phoning in connection with the vacancy. So when you say you're, you're phoning in connection with, it's not the same as saying I'm interested in. I'm phoning in connection with the project manager vacancy. How convenient is it to talk? I need two minutes of your time and no more. At this point, you don't have to ask, is it convenient to talk? If you say, is it convenient to talk? He'll simply say no. So you say, how convenient is it to talk? Now, they cannot give you a monosyllable answer to a how question. Usually they'll say to you, what is the call about? What is it concerning? Now, because he hasn't stated that he does not have two minutes, gives you a window of opportunity to put forward your candidate. Again, at this stage in the call, you haven't fully disclosed that you are phoning from a recruitment agency. Then you continue. The reason for my call is I would like to put forward a candidate for your project manager vacancy. Now, I appreciate that you would want to see candidates that uh, directly respond to your advert. And I fully understand that you may even have candidates to see for this position. However, quality candidates with these skills are like gold dust, very hard to come by. So what I would like to do is to forward a candidate CV whom I believe is perfect for this job. And I can guarantee you that the person I put forward will be as good as, if not better than, the majority of candidate CVs that you've already seen, or even candidates you've got lined up to see. And therefore, what I would like to do is to send the CV across to you. I'll add my contact details on. And if you are interested in the candidate, then all you simply need to do is to call me back. And I'll arrange a time for you to interview the candidate. As a recruitment agency, we usually charge a fee of 30% of a candidate's annual salary. However, because it's the first time you've used us, or it could be because it's the, your local company, you're based in the local area, your health authority, or any other reason you want to choose, but because of anything you choose, we will only charge you, instead of 30%, we'll charge you 15% of a candidate's salary. And of course, you only pay this fee if the candidate is as exceptional as I say they are and you decide to take the person onto your payroll. And what's the client got to lose in seeing your candidate CV? Absolutely nothing. In fact, the client will be thinking if this candidate is as good as you say they are, then they will indeed be saving thousands of pounds. Just a word of caution here. When talking to the client about a potential candidate, you need to say to them that you would like to put forward a candidate and not that you have a candidate. If you say you have a candidate, you run the risk of them saying, the client saying to you, well, tell me about your candidate. And if you haven't got one to hand, then you're in all kinds of trouble. When you say I would like to, it's not the same as saying I have. For example, a person saying that they would like to have a yacht is not the same as saying that they have a yacht. You get the point? Another piece of advice is, if you pardon the expression, if you have a top draw candidate or walk-in placement that has everything the client is looking for and more, then you should aim to charge a fee of 20 and not 15%. You may from time to time come up against an agency or small independent recruitment agency that is working with a client on a sole supplier agreement. I.e. the client only uses that agency that has an agreement in place to charge, say, 10 or 15%. In that case, there's nothing to stop you from reducing your fee and then charging the client a flat fee, as in a monetary amount, as opposed to a percentage of the candidate's annual salary.